a te nā koutou. Tau toko ngai nā skupu o Linda ki o koutou, nā rangatira, nā pūkenga rā, nā rangahau ngā kaita ki o te motu, a te nā koutou ka tō. Ko James Fitu toko unga, nō Waikato, nō Reikawa, nō Ngāti Tūwhare toa hau. So I'm James Fitu, Vision Ma Tauranga Program Lead. I have the maybe envious job for many, um, to try and work with some very well-rounded academics and scientists. Uh, my background is not research nor science, um, so I try really hard to find a way to navigate um, the language and try and find benefits for our Māori community um, as it relates to how we engage and how this becomes a mutual benefit as a result. Um, as you would have noticed, a lot of um, the talk around EBM is building trust and confidence in what we do. Um, it's not just about how do we change uh, regulations, but also the non-regulatory space, which um, again relies on how do we um, implement a lot of this research, a lot of this initiative, a lot of these ideas outside of regulation and trying to force policy change. So um, that's where I try and fit. Um, and so when I try and talk about Vision Mā Tauranga in phase two, um, I reflect on phase one. Um, there was lots of challenges. And as a result, lots of learnings to sort of how do we progress in phase two. Um, so what we see here is, um, if I just be blunt, there was limited understanding of what Kopapa Māori methodology is. So we're talking about Vision Mā Tauranga unlocking the Māori knowledge, Māori people, Māori resources, but then we're trying to bring that into a context that's not Māori. And then we're trying to develop a product, a concept, or initiatives, systems that doesn't fit in a Māori context. Um, and so when the request was coming through and the research of the challenge was, I want a Māori researcher. Um, so they get a kaupapa Māori researcher, not actually understanding what a kaupapa Māori researcher is about or what they're understanding or what they're bringing. Um, so that was one element um, in terms of learning. Uh, Recognising the difference between Māori and iwi perspectives um, and also thinking about also Pam Māori organisations and how they're representing uh, iwi, hapu, whānau, marae, Māori katoa. Um, so again, something different there to that we were, as Vision Mā Tauranga, trying to work with um, in phase one. Um, again, talking about that enabling community benefit that arises from research, uh, not just about keeping the research to ourselves, keeping the knowledge to ourselves, how do we get it out there? Um, and again, what we're hoping to do in phase two is uh, initiatives to try and do that. Um, upholding individual, professional and collective relationships within Māori community. So a lot of um, talk that we, were going, that we had here over the day, over the last few days was people, researchers are going to the communities or relationships that they have. Um, but they're also doing that on behalf of the challenge. So we're trying to find a measure to protect the integrity of those relationships and not to exploit them. Uh, constrained engagement with case study iwi. Now when I say constrained, we're one of 11 challenges. Also there's regional policy um, uh, reviews happening, district plan level reviews happening, um, as well as other research initiatives happening. So what I'm trying to get to is uh, we were not necessarily a priority to the, our, our communities, the Māori community that we're trying to engage with. Uh, clear direction and guidance on considered use of Mā Tauranga. So we're very mindful that, um, especially in Te Tawihu, uh, very um, informed and um, fought very hard around what IP or uh, intellectual property of Mā Tauranga. And so with that knowledge, how do we give confidence to Te Tawihi Ngāti Kuata, that the knowledge that we're sort of receiving from, the, um, from our communities, Māori communities, when we engage and we start developing these distinctive products systems and frameworks, how are we protecting the use um, of Mā Tauranga and how are we ensuring that there's no secondary use of that Mā Tauranga for other purposes for which it was um, gathered on. Um, and last one was, or I shouldn't say last one, but you know, just that interaction with dynamic seas, the integration of Mā Tauranga with science, um, still something that we're learning, uh, trying to gauge, because it's all about comfortability around how far we can uh, get that interaction to happen. And Vision Mā Tauranga is one person, so it's been uh, pretty full on. So what we're looking at is, um, so there's no research in phase two within the Vision Mā Tauranga program. Uh, with that said, though, as you notice with the that flash look, looking diagram around healthy ecosystems, blue economy and EBM, um, Vision Mā Tauranga is integrated within all of those themes. Um, we were finding with Tangaroa as a standalone project um, and has some freedom to fit what Māori are going to share, what 
EBM, how the ecosystem blue economy could look like. So within those four things that we presented um, by my colleagues, we're going to find well, with these questions in there, we're going to start developing those projects, uh, research ideas to fit within those things to give effect to vision Mātauranga. Uh, Māori communities, again, continue with the relationships we're building with iwi in the focal area. I do acknowledge that a lot of focus has been on Te Tauihu, which is the top of the south. Uh, the intent is by the time we finish um, phase one, uh, we'll be working with the Taranaki iwi also. Um, and develop enhanced relationships outside of the focal area. So we've been working with the iwi chairs forum to sort of extend our capability outside. Again, talking about EBM, it's about co-governance or governance structures that fit for Māori in their treaty partnership place. So we've got to do things pro uh, appropriate in that place, in that regard. Uh, sustainable Seas Research Community, again, going back to those challenges around what's Kaupapa Māori research. I'm hoping to touch on that tomorrow in our workshops. Um, but also capacity building. So that's not just about um, improving Kopapa Māori awareness within the challenge and in the research fraternity, but also um, enabling some of our emerging Māori scientists, researchers, uh, to have a bit more of a front foot uh, leadership role within sustainable seas research. Uh, so this is just, a, and Linda touched on it, uh, just a brief snapshot of the Māori workshop we had earlier this year, or last year, sorry, late last year, this time, geez, this time last year. Um, so this is just a snapshot of a few. Um, the ones that I've bolded just to sort of reflect on how our conversation was going. Um, what does success look like if we implement EBN? A healthy marine economy is sustained into a post-settlement world and far into the future. And then the last one down there is whānau prosperity and whānau health. So again, it's that um, dynamic of doing well in the commercial economy sense, but also what does it look like on, for our whānau um, back at home. And some of the key issues moving forward, if we were to have an EBM that came from the workshop, um, there's a few there, a lack of Māori resources, capacity and capability. Uh, just to explain that one, if we are going to start creating all of these uh, policy requirements, statutory obligations, non-statutory obligations, um, that puts pressure on Māori communities to participate, um, we should start thinking about how we're going to resource that participation in the future. Cool. Kia ora.